Great, fabulous. Hi, everybody, and welcome to from very cold and wet and rainy Italy, which has just gone down about 15 degrees. But um, we're, we're here, and Monica is actually joining me direct from Italy. She's in the spare room over there. <laughs> Uh, so it doesn't make an awfully chilly sound. So today we're here with Bridget, okay? And Bridget has got a very different story um, from many of you. Um, and so, welcome, Bridget. Thank you so much for inviting me. No problem. Do you want to maybe go straight in with uh, telling you what, telling people why your story is a bit different from everybody else's? Okay. Um... First of all, I've always been in love with angels, though, but even before the accident. I was in a severe traumatic brain injury um, accident several years ago, and I've had to have four brain injuries or surgeries. And I um, came out of the coma as like I was three years old. So I've had to relearn everything. Um, and my eight-year-old at the time, she helped me a lot as if she was my mother. So um, there were angels when I was in my coma that um, told me I was dying. And they were wonderful angels, um, Archangel Raphael, Haniel, and Metacron. And they said, you know, you're going to a wonderful place in heaven. And I said, what? I couldn't believe I was being told that. And so I said to them, I have a loving husband and wonderful children. And I love to help people heal. Is there any way I can come back? And they talked to the divine and and what was told to me is, Bridget, it's going to take you a lot of time to heal, but we will allow you to go back. Nice. Wow. So what exactly So, what exactly happened? Did you, did you know absolutely nothing and suddenly you were with the angels? Or tell us a bit about them leading into that. I was on a casual bike ride with a girlfriend. And yes, I had my helmet and we were going down a big hill and at the bottom of the hill there was thick um, mud and water. And I guess, thank God I don't remember any of this, I was thrown 30 feet onto concrete. And so if I hadn't been living where I was in Iowa, um, the world surgeon says I would have died right away um, because I needed extensive um, brain surgeries. Okay, so they picked you up in the, in, in the ambulance. Did, were, were you conscious when they put you into the ambulance or not? You just didn't know anything? No, I was bleeding from my mouth and nose and I wasn't making any sense and I guess it was because I was in so much pain. Okay. And when did you sort of start seeing the angels? Did you know, was there a time lapse or did you just suddenly it was all blank and then you saw the angels or what exactly happened? Um, it, I, I was in a coma and then mm -hmm. a, a woman I called after the surgeries and after I became more conscious, I couldn't believe this all happened. And so I called someone and she was a very spiritually clairvoyant woman and she's the one that told me. And so So you didn't I, you didn't actually remember seeing them, but you remember no. seeing them after uh, so this lady came in and told you that this is what had been happened and then you sort of it, it, it felt right, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And it still right. took me a while, though. There was a lot of denial for years within mm -hmm. until yeah. a physician said to me, um, because I was having eye problems, and part of the brain that was impacted was the area, the occipital area. 
And so I got tested um, by him, a real thorough testing. And I'm walking up towards him, and he's looking at my CT and looking back at me again and said, I can't believe you're walking to me. I can, you are a miracle. And the main neurosurgeon said to my friend when I was admitted, he said, are you sure this accident occurred from a bike accident? This damage in her CTs look as if she was in a horrible car accident. So. Wow. Gosh, gosh. So what, what what were the lessons you think that you learned from those angels? What did you what did you feel afterwards? How did they help you heal or did they help you heal? Oh my gosh. If I didn't have them, I, I wouldn't number one be alive. And two, for me to learn how to go slowly from a three year old to an adult. Mm -hmm. That's huge. And also then in the process, they sent miraculous people my way to help guide me in that direction because I wasn't able to talk sufficiently. I couldn't spell a word, a, a word right or a sentence the right way. Mm -hmm. um, but somehow I had helped to get a, a PowerPoint presentation and I gave it to my speech therapist and the ones that took care of me just cried and cried because they had never seen anyone with severe traumatic brain injury do what I have done and that's to me all spiritual yeah well that was superb yes I'm so happy that uh, you've uh, managed to be here with us today so thank you so great. much yes to be able to also, you can really identify now, obviously, with people who have to go through that. And that would be, you know, very beneficial in, in the world to give these people some sort of light, you know, at the end of the tunnel, which must be, oh, you don't even know. It's You're on a roll. You really are. And um, I... That's why I think I'm brought back here is to give others healing. Mm -hmm. My intuition has rised a lot. Which I'm so grateful for. Um, uh, I can tell when people are hurting mm -hmm. uh, just by their, the sight of them. Um, anyway, I'm so grateful for that because I have an even higher connection to the body, which I'm so Okay, super. Uh, Monica, is there something you'd like to ask, um, Bridget? Yes, I'm. I'm fascinated with the story, and uh, it's, it's beautifully articulated by Bridget. And I'm sure it's it's, it's it's of huge value for anyone who not only went without dramatic experience, but is um is is looking for inspiration. So I'm curious. Um, Bridget, if you don't mind, can you tell us a bit about your book? Because you, you've actually described uh, your story in the book. And um, can you tell us a bit more what people can expect and uh, what can they can learn from, from that book? Well, here it is. Discovering my life's purpose from tragedy to triumph. And do you see what the picture shows? What do you see? There is there is a heart in the middle, as far as I can see it, with uh, purple and golden to me. It looks to me of uh, angels on both sides. Can I see yes. correctly? Yes. Yeah? Uh, yes. <laughs> I have to. I have to squint my eyes. I don't see very well without glasses. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, me. But. Miracle is, is that I wrote a book that I got help with editing, etc. Um, but there's also um, photos in here too that, of course, I had help with of um, <clears throat> me 
um, getting or showing some pictures. I don't know how well you can see this, but I don't. Um, that's my mom who was always with me. That's great. We can actually, if you if you want to send it to us um, afterwards, we'll actually put the photo uh, under the under the video. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Send me the whole book. Sorry, I, I just cut out. Actually, we're having quite a bad storms around here. Um, so um, I think because Monica and I are both in the same place, you know, the uh, I thought we were going to not have problems because we have such good internet, but um, obviously that doesn't work either. But anyway, so uh, so I wasn't there actually. So uh, just for a moment, but uh, Monica held the fort and you held the fort, so that was great. We're just doing our yeah. one of us will flash and the other one will flash and and come back. So um, <laughs> I was um, wondering if you wanted pictures that I sent to you. Yes, that, well, pictures are always That's interesting. Nice. Yep. Okay. Um, um, yeah, I've even got Alfred here who's been just climbed up my leg to say hello. Um, oh, hello, Alfred. You're adorable. Yeah. This is very cool. <laughs> He's a cute he, he loves, what he loves is, is when people are online, he loves to have a look at them. And if I don't hold him, he goes up and sort of puts his paw on them, you know, to sort of say hello. So um, I have to sort of grab him before he... Uh, just fallen off the table now. Um, and they're very intuitive. Yeah, he's he's a very intuitive. Yeah, he's, but he's the a other lovely. Thing, the other thing that occurred is that after I started presenting speech therapy, I moved on to the point that I presented my story nationally and internationally, mm -hmm. which is, oh my gosh. You know, so I just wanted to mention that we don't have any questions so far, but there is some of the chance to join us soon if we have the time. We can Do we okay? Sorry? We have someone who's uh, trying to join us in uh, our, on our live. So, uh, do we have the time? We do. Yes, yes, we'll have. Yes, absolutely. I'm sure they'd like to ask some uh, some questions of Bridget. Hello. Okay. <laughs> the new participant is hiding and uh, not talking to us. Maybe just a technical. Uh, issue for a moment. Can you hear us? I'll tell you something. I've got to get this sorted out. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Well, the other thing um, I'll share is that after hearing the story and after writing my books, nothing was, you know, I had to do something to help people heal. So I. Um, learn how to provide reiki to others and um but before that i had learned in graduate school how to do healing touch so i already had experience doing that but learning how to be a practitioner in reiki is a fantastic experience right i i i do it long distance too which at this time in the world, the world is, I'm so grateful. Um, so I'm here, you or anyone wants me to provide you with Reiki. Well, that's absolutely great. We're definitely going to put a link below also to your book. Okay. Um, um, and what we're doing as well is um, at the moment, we're, we're actually launching our, our uh, amber um, section and that's all about spiritual awakening and things like that so you know we can also have you come and talk to the group uh, Monica is actually going to be doing a new series Monica what were we going to call it we we're going to actually ask people for their suggestions um, but what was our suggestion so far Monica well we we're talking we were talking about spirituality and special needs for uh, yeah. For uh, anyone who has 
variety of challenges with uh, mental, physical abilities. And uh, that's a working title. We are open to suggestions. We thought that especially it covers nicely the variety of needs. And, and, um, and it also comes from my personal experience with, with my son, who, uh, who's got a special needs education uh, because he's being diagnosed on the autistic spectrum. So that's um, that's how I thought we could uh, sort of develop this series, looking at um, different perspectives, from different perspectives of life. And we know variety is um, is, is out there, and we should um, we should welcome everyone, and we do. But yes, yeah. suggestions are welcome. Wonderful, though, Monica. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's all part of being inclusive in in a, in, 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 a, in something that a community who actually cares. You know, it's not we don't want to be just one of those boards that you know. Okay, well, let's just put you know the latest thing and just throw it on and stuff like that. We really want to be able to create a community that cares for one another, that can help each other. And you know, life is very difficult, especially now with all the the problems and things that there are. And if we've got support groups and things like that, um, it, it, would, it would be wonderful. Um, we're actually going to be doing Zoom calls every week um, for, for various of our members and things who want to join in that way. And we're also going to have guests and stuff. Just everything to be able to help people on with their spiritual journey with any problems that they specifically have with, you know, spiritual awakening or whether they want to just be able to help others. Because that's really important. We've got some people with some superb, wonderful gifts on this board. And, um, you know, we need to be able to get them out there. We need to be able to get, you know, you out there so that we can show, you know, what your skill set are. Because everybody's got different skill sets and everybody's got something that somebody else can benefit from. So if we can sort of highlight these people and highlight, you know, who can help in this, in, in this aspect, who can help in that aspect, you know, various things will resonate with different people. So we're really, really into that at the moment. So we're, we're just uh, busy brainstorming. We're doing our special needs section because uh, Monica, as she just said, has um, a child on the autistic spectrum. But my, um, my sister actually has two quite severely autistic kids. Um, and she does amazing things with them. I mean, really, really incredible. Um, and, um, you know, she shares those with, with, with the world. And she really is, I would imagine, one of the sort of um, forefront uh, people in, in dealing with autism and stuff like that. Um, she is absolutely 100% amazing. And, um, you know, those sort of things can help. And obviously, you know, how you be, what was... In fact, I'm going to ask you this question. Um, what was the thing that, obviously, it was going to be difficult for you, um, you know, relearning things. What was the, the main thing that helped you carry on, that kept you on your road? Is there one thing that really kept you focused on getting better? Well, the divine, number one, um, mm -hmm. family and people that understand what happens when someone is a brain survival. They get it. And that's when you talk about uh, the program you did for the children that's available, which is outstanding, is that the way to help all of us heal, uh, we go to support groups that get it. That's the key. People get it in there to support that person. And the other thing that I have issues with is epilepsy. So I go to support group for that as well. Um, because these people have more experience than I do, and they teach me so much. It's yes, very powerful. Really, yeah. yeah. That's and when I idea, yes. <laughs> And when I do Reiki on other people, especially long distance, what happens with me inside as I finish, I can feel the divine right there. And my heart just, it just bursts in pure joy to help someone else heal. 
not superb now. Do you actually do meditation at all? Yes. Does that help you find? Oh my gosh, yes. With my injury, I have to keep, um, sorry, this hurts. Everything so simple. You know, not a long meditation, you know, has to be a certain way. And that's what I encourage people also is that keep it simple. It still works. Superb. Well, that was wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for sharing. That's oh. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we close? Well, I always love to say when I'm done sharing my story is how much I believe in everyone for any situation that they're suffering and that I am here to give such love and peace to this world. That's lovely. That's lovely. Uh, Monica, do you have anything else you'd like to say? No, I think Bridget has um, made such a beautiful closing remark that there, I don't want to spoil it. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of love and, oh. and big hugs. Oh. And, uh, and you take care. And you have an you absolutely too. wonderful day. Okay, take care. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.